Hello everyone, I'm Laura Lewis. Welcome to a class on Redshift. This is part of GCSE Physics. Uh, we do a lot of ex uh, exam examples in this class too, because it's the, yeah, the, best, the more you practice, the more you, uh, you get better at the subject. Okay, so let's start with um, learning objectives. So we're going to look at a description of Redshift um, and see it in a spectrum. So looking at analysis of how we can tell if a galaxy, or even a star, you'll find it later, or maybe it's galaxies, is moving away or towards us by its redshift or blue shift. And finally, a discussion of how redshift has led us to the conclusion that the universe is expanding. Okay. So um, what we're going to look at, I'm going to look at this one first, actually. Okay, so we use um, a prism, okay, to split light from different stars. Okay, and when we have you ever used a prism to split light, okay, you'll find out that you get a rainbow, okay, a spectrum, okay, this is, this is it's the uh, scientific name, okay, of a rainbow. And just for a moment, don't look at the letters, look at the rainbow bit for a minute, okay, so you get, um, yeah, the rainbow bit, but also if you look at light from a star or, or even a light, okay, like in your house, you get um, what's called um, dark lines okay and this these dark lines tell us which elements are in that object so if, a, if an object gives out its own light like a star okay it would have a spectrum okay so the spectrum tells us what that um what that object is made of so yeah, especially stars so you might know our, our sun is made of mainly hydrogen helium okay but there's actually also other elements in it as well because the earth and the sun share quite a lot of elements with each other because the sun and the earth formed from the same nebula. So you might look at my um, video on star life cycles for, for that bit. Okay, we're gonna focus on redshift today. So what will we look at? We look at um, an element in a lab. So this example could be um, hydrogen in the lab. We'll just take it as that for a minute. The example, we could be looking at hydrogen. So we're burning some hydrogen in a lab on earth. We're just literally burning it in a flame. We're splitting the light with a prism. So this um, glass um, object, sort of like um, yeah, prism shape, I can say that, that, that the shape is named after the object, prism shaped, um, and it splits the light and you see these dark lines, they're called Barmer lines actually, on the spectrum. Okay, this, the science of doing this is actually called spectroscopy. So you may see that word in your exam, spectroscopy. Okay. Um, so yeah, so this is, so example, this could be hydrogen. You don't have to remember okay all the lines okay for exam because they'll give you know, they'll give you a diagram you just have to know how to do it so in general physics it's, a, it's not usually that much to remember you just remember the method that's why we're going to lots of examples today it's more about the method there's not many facts to remember it's the way you apply it okay in physics and um that's my degree was in uh, astrophysics and yeah i don't have to remember that much it's just the method okay right so this is laboratory reference we call it so on earth Sitting still, if we burn hydrogen, we get these dark lines. Okay, so this tells us each element will have different dark lines. So I'll quickly flash back to that. So each element will have a different pattern of lines. Okay, we'll talk about a bit more about that in a minute. So each element has a different pattern of lines. Okay, so we've got this in, in um, the laboratory, and then we look for all stars contain hydrogen. So it's a good thing to look for hydrogen. You might start out with that. Okay, so star, okay, so we're looking for the hydrogen lines and they match up, but they're a little bit moved over here. Okay, okay, right, so just for a minute, just have a, just have a, um, a look at the pictures for a minute. A nearby galaxy, okay, so this moved a little bit further over. Distant galaxy, everything's moved this way. Very distant galaxy, this line's completely disappeared because it's moved so far over, it's disappeared. Okay, so these lines are moving towards the red end of the spectrum. Okay, so the the whole effect, okay, is called redshift. So that's where the word comes from. It's as simple as that. It's because the lines are moving in the direction of the red part of the spectrum, so they're moving that way. Okay, so if you look at this now, the wavelength, right? The letter for wavelength is lambda. It's a Greek letter, wavelength. And it goes from 400 in the blue all the way to 700 in the red. So red light has a longer wavelength than blue light. Okay, and violet light's even got even a shorter, but we'll say blue and red just for the minute. Okay, make it a bit easier. 
So yeah, red light has a longer wavelength. So red light, so let me say that again, red light has a longer wavelength than blue light. Okay, so the re these are moving towards the red end because the wavelength is increasing. Okay, so star, galaxy, distant galaxy, the wavelength is increasing. Okay, so example, we took um, these double lines here. So quite distinctive, aren't they? That they're increasing in their wavelength. So relative to each other, they're not changing, but they're all of them and their friends here are moving to the right, moving to the red end. So they're being red shifted. So that um, the more distant the object is, the more its light is being red shifted and more its light is being stretched out. Okay, so it's moving away from us. So think of it like on a, a slinky, like being attached to, not to like one not attached to the Twilight Galaxy and another touch. It's like it's stretching it out. Okay, it's stretching as an object moves away from us, it's stretching the light out more, becoming red shifted. Its wavelength is increasing. Okay, because red light has a longer, I don't keep saying it's very important. Red light has a longer wavelength than blue light. Okay, and the more it's red shifted, the faster it's moving away from us. Okay, it's as simple as that. So the more it's red shifted, the faster it's moving away. So a nearby galaxy moving away from us, but is a little bit red shifted. Distant galaxy, more red shifted, very distant, it's completely gone off the chart. Okay, so um, yeah, the, the further away the object is very key as well. The further away the object is, the further away the galaxy is, because then we generally we talk about redshift, we can talk about some stars, that is true. We generally talk about galaxies. The stars are something a little bit different because they can, they're a bit more local. So they're a little bit, yeah, they're, they're very more subtle, but galaxies are very, very clear. Okay, and galaxies, they're all, they're all the galaxies, apart from some very nearby ones like Andromeda, because we're in the Milky Way galaxy, they're all moving away from us and they're all moving away from each other. Okay, so that's a very fundamental idea that was discovered. Okay, that um, all the galaxies are moving away from us. Okay, and they're also moving away from each other is another key point there as well. So what can that, so let's have a look at this diagram. So this is just showing that um, each element has got its own, it's called like signature. So it's got its own set of lines. I mean, I always, I always remember this sodium one. Um, sodium is in street lamps, okay. It's got these dark lamp, dark lines, sorry, on the yellow bit. So you can see why sodium lamp is, is orangey um, yellow, because it's, it's doing something very um, important. Okay, so it's something emitting light in this yellow bit. Okay, so you can tell a sodium lamp. But yeah, each element's got its own set of signature lines to it. And an interesting thing is, is that um, when uh, scientists first looked at the spectrum from the sun, they found a set of lines they didn't recognize. Okay, so they'd never burnt on Earth. And it was actually helium. Okay, so helium was discovered in the sun by its spectra before it was discovered on Earth. Okay, so it's where it, the word helium comes from the word helios, meaning sun. You might know helium from things like, yeah, party balloons. Actually, it's quite hard to make helium. It comes from the radioactive decay of uranium, so alpha decay of uranium it comes from. And helium doesn't stay on Earth very long. It's very light. And if you let it, helium balloon down, the helium from that balloon will go up in the atmosphere and escape into space. Okay, it doesn't, it's, so, it's so light. Okay, so another um, very key point, okay, about, about this would be the uh, recessional velocity of a few galaxies plotted against it. So this is Edwin Hubble's work. Okay, so it's distance away. So these are all galaxies. So we put, say for example, we could do this ourselves. We could plot all of the, um, the distances we use we use stars to do that. Okay, so that's a different thing. We started it and we look at how how fast they're moving away by their redshift. And the further the galaxy, the faster its motion away from us. Okay, so this led to the idea that the whole universe is expanding. Okay, everything is moving further away from each other. It's expanding. It's kind of, it doesn't have an example. So we'll see in a minute, we'll see an example where there's a balloon being blown up. So if you've got a balloon, 
um, and drew a pen on it, okay, and then blew it up, all the points in the balloon would move apart from each other. It's like that. And you would say, where's the centre? And it's like, well, it actually has no, has no meaning in the universe where its centre is. So, yeah, that's no, a good question, obviously. It's a very valid one, isn't it, about where the centre is, but there's no physical meaning for its centre in our universe. As we know of, yet, yeah, all these things um, are being developed, all ideas are being developed all the time for things like this. It's a very exciting sort of field to keep up with, but we know for the moment that it's expanding. Okay. So let's look at some questions. So a bit of a review. Um, yeah, there's quite a lot of information here. So let's put a text box in. Insert text box. So it says in nine. So these are all uh, questions from an exam. In 1929, that's quite a long time ago. Uh, my, one of my grandparents might have been alive then. The astronomer Edwin Hubble observed that a light from galaxies moving away from us, moving away from the Earth, that's the same thing with us really, had longer wavelengths than expected. What is the name given to this effect? We know now it's redshift. Okay, one mark, easy. Okay. And then we get his graph that we just looked at. Okay. From his observations, Hubble was able to calculate the speed of a galaxy and the distance of the galaxy from Earth. It's a very important example. You should always read it. Okay, <laughs> read it carefully because sometimes anyone can make the mistake of answering the wrong question. Okay. So figure one shows the results of Hubble's calculations. So when you look at the CO graph, you always look at the axes. So speed of galaxy away from the Earth in kilometers per second. Okay. This so is very similar to the graph we just had. Distance in kilometers. Okay, so the reason about big distances because they're galaxies. What relationship between the speed of a galaxy and the distance suggested by Hubble's results? So now, um, what looked like maybe a complicated question, it's actually very easy, isn't it? Okay. So um, some obviously were anomalies. I said that it doesn't all, they don't all follow, but in general they do, because some are nearby galaxies that are uh, might be moving quite as far away, okay, or they could be at different motions, but generally we're talking about. So the more distant the galaxy, the faster it is moving away from the Earth. Okay, so we go an extra bit. This led to the idea that the universe is expanding. Also, there's, um, if you draw a line through it, which we'll see another question, if you draw a line through that, it goes to the origin. It goes to the zero point, okay? So that means that the universe, okay, we are data, started from a zero point so it started from nothing so that's what the big bang theory is based on there could be another video based on that but this is where the big bang theory comes from okay is that this has a starting point okay done that i've done that okay so there's a balloon okay i'm talking about um there's two parts to this question okay let's have a look so the observations made by Hubble support the idea that the universe is expanding. Oh, we just said that. We already jumped the gun there, didn't we? We already said that that means that. This means that galaxies are continually moving away from each other and from the Earth. Yeah. Figure two shows a student using a balloon to model the idea of an expanding universe. So some dots which represent galaxies are marked on the balloon. The balloon was then inflated. So it says, give one strength and one weakness of the model in rep representing the idea of an expanding universe. So let's read a text box again. Okay, so um, strength, so straight away, because I compared it to a balloon straight away. Okay, so strength, all of the dots, dots, which we might draw on the balloon. Like with a pen or something, which represent galaxies are moving away from each other. Okay, it's only two marks this question, so I think too onerous. Weakness. Okay, so it depends on how he's blowing that balloon up, but I guess it's constant. So the weakness is that. In the real universe, let's write this down. In the real universe, the further the galaxies 
or from each other. The faster, so we can't really replicate this in the balloon. The faster, because it, yeah, the fast because the universe is accelerating. So faster the galaxies are moving, which is not represented in the balloon model. So this is a good thing about the word model, because it doesn't always represent exactly what we all are, does it? It tries to it tries to em, it tries to sort of emulate little bits of it, but it doesn't always emulate the whole thing. Okay. More practice. In the 1950s, there were two main theories to explain how the universe began. Theory one, the universe has always existed and is continually expanding. New galaxies are formed as older galaxies die out. That one's called a steady state, that one. So theory two, the universe began from a small region, so like a sort of small little point, that was extremely hot and dense. The universe has been expanding ever since. So that's a big bang, isn't it? Okay, actually originally the big bang was named that because um, someone actually was denying it. Okay, it was it was a scientist on a radio show, and they were saying they were kind of mocking it. They said, "Oh, like some kind of big bang," and it kind of stuck. And it's quite funny. Um, <laughs> it's quite a funny thing, isn't it? That it wasn't named that officially. It just came to it just kind of just came to stick, really, isn't it? But okay, so let's let's have a look then. In what way did the observation made by Hubble, so the, the exam used a lot of his data, support both theory one and two? Okay, so there's only one thing, isn't there? They're in common. The data collected from Hubble shows that the universe is expanding. This supports both of the theories. Only one mark. Okay, most scientists, yeah, there's always another bit, isn't there? I think you need more than one mark here. Most scientists now believe that theory two is correct, so the Big Bang. Suggest what is likely to have caused scientists to think theory one is wrong. I'm going to give you two things here, okay? Um, so the data from the Hubble, do you remember it showed there was a zero point, I pointed out. So that's one thing. Okay, let's put a text box in. So the Hubble data showed, or shows, still shows, doesn't it? <laughs> shows that the universe started from a point. Okay. Also, there is, um, it's not really that covered in this lesson, but I'll talk about it anyway for a bit. There's radiation left over from the Big Bang called the cosmic, look if it's another video, cosmic microwave background radiation. Often shortened to um, cosmic CMB, so CMBR. Okay, as you might see it like that, it's all the same thing. Okay, because there, yeah, there's been discovered a cosmic microwave background radiation, but it's also it started from a certain point. So I'll give you two bits. I know it's only worth one mark, but I'll give you two bits of information you could use there. Okay, so not, not, we've got an actual diagram of redshift now. So scientists can use the visible light spectrum from distant stars to determine whether the stars are moving. The visible light spectrum from stars includes dark lines, yet the Balmer lines, okay, at specific wavelengths. The diagram shows the visible light spectrum of the sun. So we're assuming we're not really moving that far relative to the sun, other than a little bit, <laughs> but we, we average that out, we take account. The diagram shows the visible light spectrum from the sun and from other stars, A, B, and C. Okay, A is kind of gone that way a little bit. This one's gone that way. So something can actually go towards a blue and be called blue shifted. So that means it's moving towards us. Okay, it's less common, but it does exist. That's red shifted and that's blue shifted. So how does the star, speed of star B compare to the star D? So D is more blue shifted. So it is moving towards us faster. Okay, so D, speed of 
B is less than star D. Okay, also that I would put in there that it's moving towards us as well, um, if I was the examiner. <laughs> okay, but you're only one mark. So yeah, the, the more that something's shifted, the, the faster it moves. It's exactly the same as galaxies, but just the other way. Okay, the Big Bang Theory is one theory explaining the origin of the universe. The graphs X, Y, and Z show how the size of the universe may have changed over time. So start of time, time running, size of universe, all the same, that one. Size of universe, time getting bigger, starting from a point, remember that that's important. And this one, size of the universe, start of time, it doesn't, it starts off at a certain size, okay? So which graph with the Big Bang Theory suggests is correct? So it's this one, it's, the, it's B, so let's put a text box in. Explain the reason for your answer. So um, let me just change it to no paint background. Shape format. Okay, so I can write in it. Okay, so so figure. So you get one mark for saying the right one anyway. So figure or graph. I'll, you can call me figure actually, but I'll say graph because I call it a graph. Graph. Um, X one. Okay, so X, Y, and Z, like that, graph Y, so the second one, shows the universe starting from a zero point, okay, as it, I need to, be, to talk, refer to the graph a bit, as the line crosses the axis, okay, at, zero zero okay so this supports the big bang theory that the universe started from a single point okay also graph y shows um i put a graph b so the graph y graph y the graph y shows that the universe is expanding over time which is consistent that's a good word with the big bang theory So expanding and starting from a point, okay? So the main point's there, okay? Okay, so now we've got a little bit more advanced. So I use a star. Yeah, I found this because I use a star as so a galaxy or something, which is fine. I can do that. So it's more unusual, but you can do that. So many stars are part of binary, part of a binary system. Binary star systems have two stars, star A and star B, and they rotate around a point. So some stars, like one will rotate around the other. Different ways you can do it. The visible spectrum from stars includes dark lines, like we said before. These lines are at specific wavelengths, okay? The diagram shows the position of two dark lines in the spectrum from the sun. So we assume yet the sun, we take it as a reference. It also shows the same lines in the spectra from two stars, A and B, in a binary star system at the same point in time. So we take it like a snapshot. So this is increasing wavelength, this is the red end. So it's increasing wavelength, it's red. So star A, Slightly red shifted, just slightly, because said stars would be a smaller effect, but they can show them. Star B is blue shifted. Okay. So what name is given to what name is the effect shown in spectrum from star A? So star A is red shifted. Okay. So even just knowing some words gets you some points in physics. Okay, red shifted. Only one mark, just one word. Okay. Red shift, red shifted is fine. Okay. And this one, scientists have included the two stars in a binary star system, so this one, okay, orbit around a fixed point between two stars. A comparison of the spectra between, uh, from the two stars in a binary system provides evidence to support this conclusion. Right, this is actually quite complicated. That's why I included it here. I thought it was a very interesting point. Okay, so again, let me just um, fill in the shape. Text box, remember <laughs> IT. IT as well. Okay, so star A, okay, is red shifted. So star A is red shifted. Red shifted. This means 
that the star is moving away from us. Okay. So B is blue shifted, shifted, which means the star is moving towards us. The light squashed. If one star is moving away and the other towards us, they must be orbiting a fixed point. If they didn't so it didn't show different um, wavelength changes. So um, one star could be orbiting the other. So if one showed a shift and the other one didn't, it means one star is moving, but they're both moving around a certain point. It's actually that's quite a difficult idea. That's why I included it here. I saw that question in the exam and I included it here. Okay, so I think they've even got the diagram, haven't they? Yeah, they're showing it. They're showing you in case I think you didn't get the point. They're trying to help you by saying that that is what they're doing. Okay. And then um, last question, we'll finish off with this, um, is Big Bang Theory uses redshift as evidence to explain the beginning of the universe. How does redshift from distant galaxies provide evidence for the beginning of the universe? Okay, so all oh, so the sorry, the talk about Hubble data. So the distances of the galaxies away from us and the speeds of them can be plotted on a graph to reveal a relationship between the um, distance and the speed. They are moving away. Okay. Just explain redshift for a minute, actually, just in case for marks. The redshift is the increasing of the wavelength of spectral lines, the dark lines, the barma lines, spectral lines relative to a laboratory, laboratory frame. Okay, so if the data is plotted and a line of best fit drawn, the line goes through zero, zero, like we said before, meaning the universe had a beginning and started at a zero point. Okay, so need these three things, okay, to get the three marks. So thank you for listening. I um, hope you enjoyed this video. I enjoyed doing this one. I uh, hope to see you in another class. Thank you and goodbye.